This is chapter 12. Section 8 is the last section, and we're talking about aromatic compounds. In 1825, Michael Faraday isolated a hydrocarbon called benzene. The chemical formula of benzene is C6H6, and you can see the structure here on the right-hand side. It's depicted as a six-membered carbon ring with alternating double and single bonds within the ring. We'll see in a little bit that this structure is actually something of a simplification and the real structure of benzene is somewhat more complicated. In fact, it's the first example or the simplest example of a class of compounds that we call aromatic compounds. Now, this is a wide, diverse range of compounds, but we're in this class going to focus mainly on benzene and its direct derivatives. So in this section, we're going to learn to describe the bonding in benzene and what I mean when I say it's more complicated than what you see here, as well as how to name and draw some aromatic derivatives of benzene. You may be wondering why these are called aromatic compounds. You can see here some structures of benzene-like molecules that are derived from natural sources. This one from anise, tarragon, thyme. In fact, these kinds of benzene derivatives are responsible for a lot of the aroma of these kinds of herbs and spices. And so that is the origin of the word aromatic. Now, since then, the structure of benzene has been elucidated and it's been discovered to have these unique properties that is shared by a wider array of compounds. And so the term aromatic, as used in chemistry today, no longer has anything specifically to do with the sense of smell. It's just an etymological root at this point. So benzene is the first aromatic compound that was discovered, and it was found to be a ring of six carbon atoms, each bonded to a single hydrogen atom. That means that every carbon in the ring is bonded to only three other atoms, making the geometry around each carbon trigonal planar. That means that the entire molecule is actually a completely flat ring structure. It's completely two-dimensional. We can represent this structure through this picture here or this picture here. The only difference is in the positions of the double bonds. On the left, they're here, here, and here, and on the right, they're in the other positions. But either way, they're alternating with the single bonds. We might think that these are actually the same picture because we could just rotate one of these a little bit and we would get the other one. But that's not quite right in this case. A double bond and a single bond have different properties. The double bond is shorter and stronger than a single bond. And so if we were to look at this molecule, based on these pictures, we would expect to have a short bond and then a long bond and then a short bond and then a long bond and then a short bond and then a long bond. They would be alternating between the two. Instead, what we find is that all six bonds within the ring of benzene are exactly the same. So that means that neither of these pictures is entirely correct. You can only get the correct picture by taking the average of them. And so this is an example of resonance between these two possible structures. Sometimes we represent this resonance by drawing a circle in the middle of the benzene ring instead of explicitly drawing the double bonds. The reason for this is that the resonance between these two forms indicates that the electrons in these double bonds are actually delocalized throughout the entire molecule. They're not restricted to the regions where we draw the double bonds in either one of these structures. They're allowed to exist anywhere in the entire molecule. And so we can draw a ring to indicate that All of the aromatic compounds that we're going to deal with in this class are going to be some sort of benzene derivative, and they're going to be named that way. There are a few examples of common names for benzene derivatives that you'll need to know. So, for example, if you have a methyl group on benzene, technically you could call it methylbenzene, but toluene is the more common name for it that is generally accepted by IUPAC. Another example is when you have an NH2 group. This is an amine group, which we'll learn about a little bit later. An amine group attached to a benzene ring gives you aminobenzene, or again, the common name is aniline. And then the last example, you have an OH group attached to a benzene ring. The OH group is characteristic of an alcohol. We could call this hydroxybenzene, but a better name for it is phenol. So these are three common names for common benzene derivatives that you should remember. Then we're also going to want to be able to name derivatives of these that have an additional substituent. And so we'll have to start numbering the ring relative to this primary substituent in order to give the correct name. There are also cases where a benzene ring is actually a substituent to another carbon chain. 
and in these cases it's called a phenyl group instead. So for instance here we see a molecule of 1-butene and it has this benzene ring attached to the third carbon. So we call this 3-phenyl-1-butene. We know that benzene is a cyclic compound and therefore if there's only a single substituent on it, you don't need to give a number for it. If there are two or more substituents, however, you do have to give a number to locate them and you have to choose the numbering system such that they have the lowest numbers possible. The first thing you need to check though is that this may be one of the common derivatives we just learned about, either methylbenzene, meaning toluene, hydroxylbenzene, meaning phenol, or the aminobenzene, meaning aniline. In each of those cases, the carbon where the functional group attaches is always called carbon 1. And then from there, you count the shortest distance to whatever other substituents you might have. In the cases where it's just benzene with a couple of other substituents that don't meet one of those uh, categories, then you would just number them to give them both the lowest numbers possible. So for instance, if we only have a chlorine atom on a benzene ring, it's just chlorobenzene and we don't need a number. If there are two chlorines, however, we need numbers to indicate their relative position. If they're right next to each other, then either one of them could be one and the other one would be two, and this would be one, two dichlorobenzene. If there's a gap between them where there's a chlorine and then an empty carbon and then the chlorine, then it's one, three dichlorobenzene. If the chlorines are opposite to one another, then it's 1,4-dichlorobenzene. You might have heard of the explosive called TNT. What you might not know is that TNT actually stands for trinitrotoluene. And TNT has the structure that you see here. It's toluene because it's a benzene ring with a methyl group attached to it. So if you recall from our numbering system, the carbon where the methyl group attaches is always going to be carbon number one. In this case, we can count in either direction and we'll get the same numbers for these NO2 groups, which are the nitro groups in trinitro. So this is carbon number one, this is number two, this is number three, this is number four, this is number five, and this is number six. So what we have is a molecule of toluene with three nitro groups, tri-nitro, and they're at the two, four, and six positions. So the correct name for this molecule is actually two comma four comma six tri-nitro toluene, or TNT. So what are the best names for the following two compounds? Well, the first one is a molecule of benzene with a chlorine group attached to it. Since there's only one substituent, we don't need to include the number, so we can leave out C as the answer. And then we know that it's benzene, not cyclohexane, so A isn't the correct answer. So this must be chlorobenzene, B. For question two, we have a benzene ring with two methyl groups. Now we could call the one methyl group toluene, and call this methyl toluene, but that would be an odd way of mixing up the methyl groups, and none of these answers show toluene. So instead, we're going to look at this as a dimethylbenzene, and then we're going to figure out the numbering system. Again, since the groups are the same, you can pick either one to start as carbon number one, and then you just count the shortest distance to the other. So this would be carbon one, this would be two, and then this would be three. So this is 1,3-dimethylbenzene. That brings us to the end of the chapter on organic chemistry. We have a lot more organic chemistry coming up in the next few chapters and for the uh, biomolecules chapter. So make sure that you study this, especially the naming conventions for alkanes and substituted alkanes, because those sorts of things are going to be important for a lot of what is to come.